It's raining. <laughs> I had an attempt to get exercise on the Sunday when it was 15 degrees outside. I got wet. <laughs> oh! And I'm out of shape. Big time. It is so good to be home. Oh my gosh. Uh, you don't really appreciate home until you go away uh, for a while. And being gone, it was over six weeks in the end. Uh, it really makes you appreciate what you have uh, here. Um, family, opportunity, uh, just everything. So I would recommend it if you can uh, afford it or just have time to do it. I think you need to make time, but I would say every farmer needs to go to a different area of the world and just experience farming through their eyes. I would have to say New Zealand uh, is very similar to Canada in terms of kind of crop and productivity probably, uh, similar climatically in different areas and a big dairy industry. Uh, but Australia was, just blew my mind. What those farmers can do with uh, very old soils, very weathered soils. And I think for those who watched the videos, you could see how tough some of the areas were. Uh, Australia was a beautiful country. Uh, it blew my mind in terms of some of my expectations. I imagine this red barren <laughs> landscape. And I know a lot of it is in the middle of the country, but around the edge where there's rainfall, now that they're getting some, it was green and beautiful and uh, the Australian people and, and the New Zealand people are just great people. Uh, so it really was a quite humbling experience because now that I'm home and I look at the opportunities we have with our soils, uh, we got to do a better job of treating them right because uh, we're just, uh, we're lucky to have such good soils. So. I think that's something I learned out of my whole trip was uh, just, I got to do a better job. We do a good job. I, I like to think we do a good job, but we, we do need to do a little bit better job. And I think that's why I do work with cover crops and other things. And uh, I think it's just kind of affirmation that we're going in the right direction. So that was a big learning experience for me. The other thing too, in regards to my Nuffield topic around farmer to farmer collaborations, uh, the Australian farmers do a very good job of working together. And I think some of it's forced by isolation, not only as rurally that uh, they're very far apart and it's a very widespread landscape for farming, but as a country, they're fairly isolated as well. And I think it just really forced them to work together uh, because they don't view each other as competition. If a grain farm farm beside each other, there's still the little bit of competition for land, but they see each other not as competitors, but as the world as their competitor, that they have to export their product and that that is more important to them than competing with their neighbor. And because of that, they work very well together to try to get better yields, better water use efficiency, uh, better cost production around things. So they do such a good job at that, that uh, it was very inspiring. And I think there's a lot of lessons that could be learned there. And I took a lot of notes. So now that I will have to go into uh, two weeks of self-imposed isolation, uh, quarantine, I guess you could call it. Uh, I might start working on my Nuffield report because I got to write it yet, but uh, just happy to be in my shop. And I got some stuff I gotta do here. So these are planter parts that I didn't get done before I left. So I think that's on the list this week. And I got a few presents while I was gone uh, to Australia, New Zealand. And we had some very old door openers. And now I got some new ones. So I don't actually don't have to hop out, open my door anymore. I got automatic. So I'm getting old, present to myself. So anyways, that's a quick update from my Nuffield trip.
It is for me day. So Tuesday. Well, I'm Tuesday, so it wasn't, third day. <laughs> it's the third day of self isolation, and everyone in our house is going a little stir crazy. But that's fine. We got stuff to do. Uh, the nice part about being on a farm is I changed the scenery in the shop here. And you can see the air seeder in the background. Uh, it was interesting. You'll probably see it in Sandy's video, or she's going to probably talk about it. But uh, we got home and our septic tank for the house was full. So we had to get that cleaned up. But to do that, I needed to get my little mini excavator uh, to dig up the lids and uh, the batteries were dead and everything, which I expected because everything's kind of sat for six weeks without running and there's enough stuff plugged into the tractors anymore with technology that it tends to slowly drain the battery. So after getting everything charged up, getting my combine back from the repair guy, Shuffling a whole bunch of equipment around. I got the air seeder here in the shop and we're just gonna get it ready for the preseason. Um, I did work on some of these planter arms uh, for the wheels, the gauge wheel arms. Uh, so the wheels are back on the arms, but I screwed up on the, on the kits. And here you'll see kind of a bushing that screws into the arm. And I'll show that later, but I ordered the wrong one. So the new ones are coming, they should be here next week. So I'm like, well, since I can't really work on the planter because I don't have all the parts, I'll get the air seeder cleaned up. And I'll be honest, uh, the way the fall went, we basically put it in the corner of the back shed and forgot about it. And now I have to deal with the hydraulic leak that happened and blew oil all over the place, as you can see. Uh, so we'll wash it up. It needs greased and uh, it still had wheat seed in it. Uh, so we had to empty some wheat seed out of it. We got to vacuum out the inside yet, which I'm going to do right now. So pick away at some of these odd jobs. This thing doesn't need much. It just needs grease. Uh, but we do have to plant a few acres of oats because we're going to put a little bit more hay in this spring because we're just a hair short on acres. Uh, so to keep Sandy happy, we're going to put a few more acres in. So uh, we'll get it cleaned up and ready to do the oats and then it will plant soybeans later on when the weather gets nice. But it's been quite nice for the end of March here. I took a look at some winter wheat and I'll take you for a journey later. Uh, some looks good, some looks a little tough, but uh, the winter canola looks good. Uh, but we'll do a crop tour on a nice day here. Uh, we just had a rain system roll through. Uh, and the fields actually were pretty dry, I was surprised. Uh, so we're wet again and the temperature is dropping. It was like 15 degrees when I walked out this morning and now I can see my breath. So, good day to be in the shop. So that stuff we have to vacuum out, uh, which is not too bad. It's probably a total of, I don't know, well, one and a half, two, well, two bushels probably, two bushels. So we'll get that cleaned up. And I need to find the vacuum cleaner. I don't know. Well, I got it vacuumed out as you can see, and I'll have to do some censoring because Sandy and I are both very jet lagged right now. We're not sleeping very well. Uh, and uh, we might be a little short with each other, which is fine. And the fact that we're in self isolation and can't go anywhere uh, adds to the complexity of our relationship. But anyways, I'm going to 
wash this now and it can sit in here for the weekend because today is Friday and it'll be dry for me to grease first of the week. So I'm gonna go and power wash. In the wind before it gets freezing cold. Day nine of self isolation on the farm. Safe thing to do. So, not that probably many people know or that many people care what self isolation <laughs> looks like on a farm. But for me, it uh, and Sandy, it's been uh, quiet. I'm getting a lot of jobs done. I didn't think I was going to get done because I thought I'd still be in New Zealand. Uh, we're actually shipping corn and wheat right now. The wheat, I believe, is going into flour mills to make flour. It's interesting with this kind of mandatory lockdown we have here in Ontario. A lot of people have gone back to more traditional methods of cooking in terms of actually baking. Uh, so there has been uh, some instances where there's no flour on the shelves, which is uh, probably the first time in a long time, because uh, people are actually either baking bread or baking cookies or other things. So uh, good to keep wheat going into the market. Uh, ours is soft red winter wheat that actually goes to make flour for cookies and crackers and stuff like that. And corn for the feed industry to keep these animals fed. So. Even though uh, in Ontario we're running on essential services only right now, agriculture is one of the essential services and so is trucking, so uh, we haven't felt the impacts per se drastically on our farm and I really feel for those who are impacted or without work right now because uh, it's a very trying time. So if we can provide some form of relief from uh, the pressures at home through uh, videos then hopefully we can do that for you. But. Uh, yeah, just uh, shop time and bits and pieces all clipped together here that I've been kind of filming over the last little bit uh, since I've been home this week. And uh, we'll keep you posted on where things are at on the farm here. load wheat this morning I don't have my camera with me so I got my phone going and I've been a ramrod because I haven't been home long enough to realize I gotta be gentle with stuff and two days in a row I've plugged the unload auger on the bin with wheat and it's taken me about 20 minutes with a pipe wrench to get it uh, unplugged and I've cooked a couple belts so we're lipping through and hopefully I can get some new belts here uh, tomorrow or today yet, I'll have to send somebody to get them for me. But uh, we're in essential service, so you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, Want to give a shout out to Shoop. They do agricultural aftermarket parts for stuff. I got some uh, new planter lift arms or gauge wheel arms, I should say, for uh, this year, for this spring, because mine were wore out. And I was talking about that in a video before I left uh, to go to Australia and New Zealand, but they sent a really nice hat. It uh, fits my head too, so thanks Shoop for doing that. And uh, I screwed up on my order anyways back in February, so I had to call them up and get some more parts sent and they had them here within a week, which was awesome. So. We'll go see what the planner looks like now, uh, but uh, thanks Shoop for the awesome hat. So got the planner in the shop here and uh, pretty much where I left off before I left to go travel was everything in the cab was kind of ready to go up here. Uh, the whole lorry cart part was go good to go. The planter was the only thing I was working on. And if you remember, it was these uh, arms that I was replacing and I'll try to zoom in on that or at least focus in on it So I got the wheels reattached onto the arm the arm in here new uh, Bushings here to help tighten it because the goal here is to have it as tight to the disc as you can 
so that uh, it keeps mud from building up in behind or getting dirt coming in uh, where we open up to put the seed in. So it is good to go uh, from a mechanic standpoint. The planter is greased, serviced, ready to go. Uh, the only thing I got to check is some air pressures on the Alaria card actually and on the planter here these two kind of wing gauge wheels and it should be good to go other than I got to get this tank mounted on the front and make sure the starter fertilizer system works okay. So uh, a couple of those jobs to do and as I said we're in pretty good shape waiting on my sprayer to come back from Delta and Seaforth. They're doing some required maintenance on it. I'm hoping to maybe get it first of the week. But uh, I got bored yesterday and started cutting limbs off trees that were decapitating Sandy while she cut grass. So uh, doing some of these jobs that we wouldn't have got done normally because last winter I was building this still, early spring, the planter. I would have been gone traveling with my nut field, but I'm home and the weather has been fantastic knock on wood here in Ontario for the last little bit that we're able to do some outside jobs which is fantastic. We haven't had a spring like this for a couple of years uh, even though it kind of intermittent rains every once in a while. The warmer temperatures have been nice to work out in so we're getting some outside jobs done that we usually don't get we haven't gotten done the last couple of years because of the weather and uh, it's nice to be outside especially when you're stuck in self-isolation so that's kind of an update.